you'd like to turn with me in your Bibles, please, to the book of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 11, and I'm going to be reading the first seven verses. So it's Hebrews chapter 11, on page 1209 of the Church Bible. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for, and assurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command, so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. By faith Abel brought, a, brought God a better offering than Cain did. By faith he was commended as righteous when God spoke well of his offerings. And by faith, Abel still speaks, even though he is dead. By faith, Enoch was taken from this life, so that he did not experience death. He could not be found, because God had taken him away. For before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God. And without faith, it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists, and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. By faith, Noah, when warned about things not yet seen, in holy fear built an ark to save his family. By his faith he condemned the world, and became heir of the righteousness that is in keeping with faith. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word, and now as we seek to look into it, so we ask that you would enable me to speak, and touch all our hearts. Speak into our lives, not the words of man, but what you would say to each one of us. Challenge us, comfort us, encourage us, we pray, through Jesus. Faith is confidence in what we hope for, and assurance about what we do not see, verse 1. The writer of this letter to the Hebrews is writing to Jewish believers who are under pressure to abandon faith in Christ and return to dry, dead, legalistic religion. So here, in chapter 11, he's reminding them what faith is and how it was exercised by the people of God in the Old Testament. So what follows is a whole catalogue of God's faithful people from history. Characters that the first readers would have been familiar with. Heroes from of old. But heroes because they had faith. Without faith it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists, and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. You can't get to God by living by the rules of the Old Testament, by doing good works or religious observances. And all these people were commended because they possessed faith, and because they lived by it. Over the next few weeks, we will look at each example to see how they are an example to us, and hopefully find encouragement, encouragement to emulate them. Last time the writer mentioned Abel and Enoch. This week we're in verse 7, where we meet Noah. By faith Noah, when warned about things not yet seen, in holy fear built an ark to save his family. Now Noah lived at a precarious time. Human beings had multiplied in number, but they paid no account to God. They and we were created to love and serve God, but we were a fallen race and rebellion against our Creator, going our own way. 
And earlier on, in Genesis 6, we're told that the Lord saw how great the wickedness of the human race had become on the earth, and that every inclination of the human heart was only evil all the time. The Lord regretted that he had made human beings on the earth, and his heart was deeply troubled. Human beings are a fallen race. God created us in love, and when he saw how corrupt, how evil humanity was becoming, and remember that God is God, and he is the arbiter of good and evil. It is his decision as to what good and evil are. He is God, and that is his prerogative. To flout the commands of God is to do evil. He is good, he is loving, he is perfect. His commands are expressions of his love. We saw this morning how God wants the best for all. For all to be able to flourish and be safe. And that is what the law, the commandments of the Old Testament are all about. But in Noah's day, God saw the depravity, the evil of the human race, and he regretted that he'd made human beings on the earth. Now the word that's translated as regretted there means to experience emotional pain. So perhaps a better translation for that word is the, is the old one, to say that God was grieved. Because you can only grieve someone who loves you. Because grief is an expression of love. A deep sense of loss. And God is angered by sin. Because when we sin, we cut ourselves off from him. He grieves for humanity because he loves us. Because we're lost to him because of our sin. We've made ourselves abhorrent to him, but he loves us, and he grieves for us. Now God grieves that he created humanity. He created us in him, in his image, giving us freedom to choose, free will. But when we exercise that free will, human beings inevitably choose to go their own way. God looked at the uncleanness, the violence, the depravity and determined to wipe from the earth the human race, to put an end to the wickedness. Now as we look over the human race today, this should fill our hearts with fear and concern for our fellow human beings. And as I would say that the depravity of our generation far exceeds anything that went before. But God looked on Noah, and his heart was differently moved. Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time, and he walked faithfully with God. He wasn't perfect. If we were to read further on in Noah's account, we'll see that he was far from perfect. But he sought God's face. He trusted in God. He was a man of faith. He walked faithfully with God. He sought to live in obedience to God. And because he walked with God in faith and obedience, God determined to spare, to save Noah and his family from the coming judgment. And Noah lived in the Middle East, a region of heat and desert. Yet God commanded him to make an ark, literally a vessel to contain. One that would contain Noah, his family, and animals from every class of creature. It was to be a great ship, and it was huge. Over 450 feet long, 75 feet wide and 45 feet high. 
So it was massive. It would have taken years to build. And it was a great feat for a whole team of people, let alone one family. As he built it, the ark would have dominated the, la the landscape. In a desert region, he was commanded to build a huge ship, greater than anything that had gone before, with three decks coated inside and out with pitch, pitch that would seal and waterproof it. The people of the surrounding area must have thought that Noah was mad as he built this enormous object. He must have been a laughing stock. But Noah believed God. He trusted in God. And when warned about things not yet seen, he believed God. Even though the sun shone brightly, even though God was calling him to do something that seemed illogical, he took the warning. In holy fear, he built an ark. Verse 7. And we should likewise fear God. He's God. He's greater than our hearts could ever conceive. He's holy. God is not our mate. He's a consuming fire. He loves us and he is merciful. But we should hold him in absolute awe. We should have love mixed with fear. Because he's holy, majestic, the ruler of the universe, the centre of all the worship in heaven, with myriads upon myriads of angels serving him. Throughout the Bible, from the prophets of old, like Isaiah and Ezekiel, to the Apostle John, at the beginning of the book of Revelation, whenever anyone encountered God, be that in the Old Testament or the risen and exalted Jesus in the New. They all likewise fell prostrate before him, overwhelmed by his majesty and his holiness. Jesus is God. God who took our humanity on himself, coming to live among us coming to make himself a sacrifice for our sin. He offered himself in agony on the cross for our forgiveness. His agony was not only the physical pain of crucifixion, the greater agony was the bearing of all our sin in his perfect soul. Paul puts it so well when he says, he who had no sin, he who knew no sin, was made to be sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. That is the measure of the love and mercy of God. That he bore our sin, everything that's not right about us, all that is abhorrent to him, paying for it, that we might be forgiven by God and be reconciled to him. That should invoke a sense of fear and reverence in us. That it cost God that to forgive us. It should provoke a loathing of our sin that caused him such pain and a desire, a deep desire to live a holy life in response to his great love. So, with holy fear, with close and reverent attention, Noah obeyed everything that God had commanded him. Trusting in God, even though to most what he was commanded to do would have sounded fantasy, Noah had faith. He trusted in God, and the outworking of his faith caused him to obey God, doing all that God commanded him. 
The writer of Hebrews included Noah as an example of faith to his first readers because they were in danger of abandoning Jesus. Our only salvation. They were in danger of going along with the world. Jesus calls us to follow him. To trust him. To change our minds about the world and go his way, not our, not our own. Our generation is corrupt and wicked. Its values are selfish. It puts man, the individual, at the centre and discards God altogether. The values of this generation are corrupt. It screams about rights, our right to choose, our right to live and love as we want to. It lampoons and attacks and cancels those who think differently. But Jesus says, take up your cross daily and follow me. Lay aside your rights, die to yourself, change your mind. Accept his rule over you and follow Jesus. We're called to live differently to the world, to go into the, to, in the opposite direction, to reject what the world commands us, everything that it commands us to embrace and endorse all the filth of this generation. commands us to, to reject all of that and go his way. The world is going to its destruction. The people of this world, like the people of Noah's day, are rushing headlong into hell. And we dare not go with them. We must be like Noah and in holy fear obey God. Run to Jesus and be saved from the coming torrent of judgment. Jesus calls us to go his way, to be obedient to his word and to the calling of his spirit. For all of us that means living differently, allowing him to make us holy. For without holiness, no one will see God. For some of us, there may be a specific calling to do something special. Christian history is absolutely littered with people whom God called to do what the world saw as illogical. You all know that my main heroine is Gladys Aylward, a lady that was called by God to go to China. She was a housemaid, unqualified in the eyes of the world, unqualified in the eyes of the China Inland Mission. Yet Gladys obeyed God. The missionary societies wouldn't send her. So to obey God, she had to go under her own steam. So she went, crossing Europe, crossing Russia in the midst of revolution, Trusting God, exercising faith, and obeying his call. Now Gladys' faith was proved right, because she had perhaps a greater effect on China than a thousand other missionaries. Similarly, in our own generation, most of us will have heard of Jackie Pullinger, a young Christian who was called by God to get on a ship, go around the world, and get off it when God told her to. God told her to get off at Hong Kong. Everybody thought that she was crazy in doing this, but God had called her. And Jackie was used to transform the lives of thousands of people drug addicts and gangsters in the no-go areas of 
the city of Hong Kong. Like Noah, her faith was rewarded and proved to be right. So back to Noah in Hebrews 11. By faith, Noah condemned the world. He condemned the world because he obeyed God's warning when the world ignored him. And, be and he became the heir of the righteousness that is in keeping with fair faith. Noah believed God. His life stood as a rebuke to his generation. But because he lived obediently, in confident boldness in regard to God's word, he was counted as righteous as, and as an example to us. Noah stood as a light in the midst of a dark generation. Our lives should likewise stand out as lights in the midst of our dark, depraved generation. Lights that will point to Christ, those who will see. And lights to highlight the depravity of those who will not. Noah received his reward because of his obedient faith. Him and his family were the only ones saved from the flood. Because he believed, because he obeyed, he received his reward, and so will we, if we will likewise trust Jesus and follow him. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the example of Noah, a man who believed you, who, who did what you commanded, even though it seemed against all logic. But Father, his faith was rewarded, for his family was saved from the, from the torrent. And we thank you that through Jesus, trusting in him and living in faithful obedience we too will escape the torrent of judgment that is coming and Father we are so grateful grant that we might have faith